Okay, so I think let us once again revise the diagram rules. Okay, so we were specifically talking about the Hood and Holes diagrams. So the rule number one, I will let me rewrite the rules a little bit more clearly. So we have each dot. contributes to a matrix element of Hamiltonian either one or two particle. So basically two particle means two electron integral and if it is two particle then it is anti symmetrized okay so for each of these either f or v there is a dot v essential is of course again two particle minus one particle so one particle doesn't contribute so basically two particle then the second is that all these dots have to be joined. So the question is that how many dots are there? So the perturbation order I can also write here that with one or two pairs of So each pair consists of one incoming and one outgoing line. So I have either one pair for one particle or two pair for two particle dots. And then energy diagrams are represented by closed diagrams involving this dot. So I just join all the dots in a manner that they are completely closed. Okay, then uh, an imaginary line. between the dots Let me also specify right here that this matrix element is a numerator so that these are constructed with sum over E of holes minus sum over E particles as the denominator. But the sum is the number of whole lines that this intersects 
the imaginary line that intersects the number of particles that this intersects ok. Is it clear? Then number 5 is if you have in the entire closed diagram if you have a number of holes is H, number of loops is L, loops can very often be seen from the diagram or from the algebra. Then you attach a factor minus 1 to the power H L, H plus L. So multiply by this factor. Then number 6 is 2 to the power minus K where K is the number of equivalent pairs. So what is an equivalent pair? It is either a pair of holes or a pair of particle starting from the same vertex and ending at the same vertex. So starting from a vertex and ending at the another vertex which is basically they have to be all same. And of course at the end it is important to write that sum over all holes and particles. When you write the algebra, we have to ensure that all internal holes and particles are summed up. Okay, so we did some practice problem. So one was the MP2 itself. So we said this is MP. Sorry, this is MP2 in the Huygen holes, which is one by four. This is A. This is B. P and Q, 1 by 4 P Q A B, so the matrix element that this contributes is basically the pair of incoming on one side and outgoing in the other side or since they are all real it does not matter you can have outgoing here and incoming here okay. So this is uh, this then we did the third order diagrams. So we saw there are three third order diagrams. So these are three third order diagrams, one is a whole whole ladder, particle particle ladder, this is a whole whole ladder, this is a whole particle ladder, okay. So when you draw of course you can write the expressions, if I ask you to write the algebraic expression for this I hope all of you can write it, okay. So just I am asking you a question, how many, what will be the factor 2 to the power minus, what is the factor here, 1 by 8. So the here also 1 by 8, here there is no factor, right, there is no equivalent line, so just plus, just 1, right, for the whole particle ladder and then you have minus 1 to the power h plus whole, what will be the sign here, number of loops, the number of loops is the only thing that you have to count properly. And when you write the uh, numerator, Actually from there also you can calculate the loops, as soon as you write the numerator you can calculate the loops without looking at diagrams, whichever you are comfortable. So how many loops are there? Depends on how you are calculating, depends on how you write the numerator. Let us let's try to write one of them, I think that is easier. So let us write this A, yesterday I did not write the expression, right? Uh, A, B, P, Q, R, S, the first one I am writing, okay. So these four are particle lines, we will put this loop uh, rule little bit later, first let me write down the numerator. So this is sum over A, B, P, Q, R, S, 1 by 8, then you have R, S, now it is a question of how you write it, 
R S anti symmetrize A B or R S anti symmetrize B A. You have two choices, right? But write it in some way, and accordingly loops will change. So R S anti symmetrize A B. So you have to now remember A is going to R from the diagram, and then you have R S anti symmetrize P Q and P Q just one minute. P Q anti symmetrize A B. You can write any way you want. Now you divide this two imaginary lines. Remember when I wrote that rule, please modify an imaginary line between two vertices, between every pair of vertices okay, in succession. And not every pair means not, not between 1 and 3, every dots in succession, okay, every adjacent vertices. Okay. So then you have epsilon A plus epsilon B minus epsilon R minus epsilon S divided by epsilon A plus epsilon B minus epsilon P minus epsilon T. Okay. Fine. Up to this point. Now we will count the loops. So let us start from somewhere. Let us say A. I have to come back to A. A to R, R to P, P to A. So one loop. Then I go from B, B to S, S to Q, Q to B. So I have two loops. See A to R is R to A I can do. That is un un unimportant. That does not matter. So you can say A to P if you are saying A to P, P to R, R to A. So let me change it to A B R S. Because it does not matter. This It is symmetric. Is there a convention or you can keep it like There is no convention as long as they are real orbitals anyway. Okay. It does not matter. They are identical. So we are all talking of real orbitals here. So there is. You have to keep track as long as the convention is same. So I think that will now cause your so A to R, R to P, P to A. Okay. So it doesn't matter. You should not get confused by this. But so the point is here. You have two loops. So the loops are very clear. That is one is this loop. So if you look at diagram, actually one is this loop, goes here, comes back. So that's one loop. The second is the other loop goes from here, goes here, comes back. So there are two distinct loops. So this is second one I can label with the blue line. Okay. So exactly the same way I can do the whole hole. So this is the first this is the first loop. This, this and comes back here, back here. And the second loop is follow this blue line, come here and back here. So again there are two loops. Okay, And of course there are two whole lines, so this is the plus sign. Okay, And I can draw exactly the same way the whole hole, except the symbols will now change. I will have A, B, C, D and two particle lines. Let us try to, so we have another diagram, Okay, so you can draw this. Let us try to write the third one. The third one, I can make three loops. Okay, for the third one, for example, this can be a loop by itself. This can be a loop by itself. This can be a loop by itself. So there are three loops. Each of these vertices, you can have a pair of lines, can be a loop. But again, it depends on how you want to write it. If it's interchange, then loops can be two. Okay, I can interchange one line. But if I follow this, and that is the more ready convention. So A B C P Q R. So let me label this again. So let us say this is R, this is A, no sorry, this is P, this is A, this is Q, this is B, this is R, this is C. That is easy. So I have three particle lines, three whole lines. So look at the first vertex, outgoing is C, A, Okay, anti-symmetrize then R, P, then you have B, R, anti-symmetrize Q, A, no sorry, this is Q, the second one is B, R, then a, yeah, A, C, sorry. 
think one minute. So B, B is going out, R is going out, and then A is going in C, A C. Then the last one is A is going out, P is going out. Not a Q, 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 Q. Q is going out, P is going out, and then B comes in, A comes in. So you can see one loop is A to P, P to A, okay, and R to C, C to R, Q to B, B to Q. the same way. This is Q, sorry. Okay. So, that second one should be also Q. So, I am drawing this diagram again here so that everybody can see. So, the labeling that I have done is P A outer line, this is P, this is A, then you have Q and B. So, this is B, this is Q, this is R, this is C, okay. So, that is the label we have done and this algebra corresponds to this. So, now you have to see the sign. How many internal holes are there? How many loops are there? Okay. So, how many loops are there? 3. The way I have written and of course, the internal hole lines are also 3. So, it remains plus and no 1 by 2 factor. There is no equivalent pair of lines. Okay. So, so that becomes the algebra. So, if I give you a diagram, perturbation diagram, you should be able to write the algebra in using anti-symmetrized matrix algebra. Yeah, any problem? Huh? Oh, numerator, yeah, I am sorry, I am always forgetting the numerator. Yeah, numerator is easy, of course, you just write it down. So, you have e epsilon A plus epsilon C, right, A and C, P and R. See numerator you do not have to bother, you know there is no order or anything, just see the lines, it is very easy. And then you have epsilon A plus epsilon B minus epsilon P minus epsilon You just have to keep track of your symbols. Yes, total energy is some, so, MP, MP, so MP3 is this plus this plus this. So that is why I have written plus, 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 okay. So, up to third order, the diagrams, if you look at the third order diagram, they are also very similar to this diagram and that is why they are called ladder diagrams and there is no other possibility of writing any more lines. In fact, it can be seen that such diagrams actually come because of doubly excited determinants that MBPT MP3 also contains only doubly excited determinant. I said that even in the first quantized, if you look at the third order energy, it is for psi 0, 0. V psi 0 k, then psi 0 k, sorry, psi 0 k, sorry, psi k 0, psi k 0, V psi L 0, psi L 0, V psi 0, 0. Okay, so, this is basically one of the major and then of course, you have a denominator. So, here you can see that you have only Hartree-Fock to doubles and of course, this k must also be doubles because you have to come back to Hartree-Fock. So, you have doubles to doubles and, and back to Hartree-Fock. So, you have no other terms. Now, you should be actually able to see the first quantized MP3 diagrams. They are not uh, the algebraic expression 
you will realize that the actual expression is not so simple. The actual expression is a combination of two expressions out of which a part of first expression cancels the second expression and we have only these particular terms which in uh, which in diagrammatic notations are basically just the unlinked diagram, the linked diagrams and that was the basic idea of what we said is that the linked cluster expansion that all, all parts of the diagram must be closed and linked. So, so if you refine that H1, all diagrams, the one of the rules that we wrote, all diagrams are not only closed, all energy diagrams, but also they must be linked. So, this is I, something that I thought I would not bother so much, but I can at least show algebraically where the problem comes up. So, you can go back to the algebraic expression of perturbation theory and we can write E naught 3. So, let us start from E naught 3. I hope you remember how to write E naught 3. Psi 0 0 V psi 0 2 correct. So, if you remember E naught 3 expression, it was psi 0 0 V psi 0 second order right in the intermediate normalization second order. So, we have to now get what is psi 0 2. So, how do I get psi 0 2? I go back to my second order equation H naught minus A 0 0 psi 0 2 plus V minus A 0 1 psi 0 1 minus A 0 2 psi 0 0 equal to 0. What we need to do is to find to find out what are the expansion of psi 0 2 in terms of psi 0 case because remember we will exactly like first order we will write psi 0 2 as a linear combination of all k not equal to 0 which I now call C k 2 psi 0 k right the same expression that I use for the first order except that the coefficients will now be called C k 2. So, I have to find out this C k 2 right. I have to find out this C k 2. So, a specific C n 2 is nothing but psi 0 n psi 0 2. So, this is the matrix element that I have to find out. If I know this matrix element then I know the entire expansion of psi 0 2. I will put it here and I will start to get E naught 3 okay. So, this is also psi n 0 okay. So, let us now find out this what is the value. So, what do I do? I, I start with this expansion and project with a psi n 0 okay. So, if I project with psi n 0, I will get E n 0 minus A 0 0. So, I will get first E n 0 minus E 0 0 into psi n 0 psi 0 2. This is what I want to find out remember. So, that is what I get from the first expression right. I am projecting with psi n 0 from the left. Then I have psi n 0 V I want to write this as two terms psi n 0 V psi 0 1 minus E 0 1 psi n 0 psi 0 1 okay. This is not this is not 0 because it is a first order. So, this is the expansion that I get. So, I write this as this is bracket. So, I have sin 0 psi 0 2 equal to I will have two terms one is sin 0 v psi 0 1 minus E 0 1 psi n 0 psi 0 1 divided by the denominator changed. Instead of changing sign here, 
I have changed, just changed the denominator sign. Okay. Is it all right? So now you can see that when I put this back here, I actually have two terms. One coming from here, one coming from here. So if I explicitly write D naught 3, I will first get psi 0 0 V and now I can expand this by putting an N here, okay or this is basically the R resolvent kind of thing. So I can expand this by writing this as sum over N. psi n 0 and then C n 2 which is basically this term that I wrote. So this would be now psi n 0 V psi 0 1 minus E 0 1 psi n 0 psi 0 1 divided by Okay. It looks big, but it is actually not big. What I have done here only in because I have to write psi 0 2, I have written psi 0 2 as sum over n not equal to 0, psi n 0 and this coefficient. This coefficient is just here. So I have just put this whole thing here including the denominator. So it is really not big. Okay. So just the denominator I have written here and then you can see that I have two expressions. One is this, another is this. Each of the expressions have psi naught 1, okay, which I now know how to expand and I will put that psi naught 1 expansion in each case and then I will complete the algebra. So let us uh, write the psi naught 1. So what is psi 0 1? This I already know, right. So psi 0 1 is sum over some m, I am using a different dummy index from n sum over m again cm1 but now I know what is cm1. So can somebody tell me again psi m0 right v psi 0 0 psi m0 and I can write psi m0 here divided by the denominator e0 0 minus e0 correct. So all I have to do is in this expression of psi naught 1, I have to substitute that. So if you can see now there will be two double summation and because psi 0 1 also has a denominator, there will be two denominators, okay. So if you are just little bit careful with algebra, you should be able to write the entire expression now. So then your E naught 3 becomes, let us do it carefully, sum over n, sum over m both not equal to 0. Sometimes they just write prime here to indicate that 0 is excluded. You have psi 0 0, V psi n 0, that is the first term. Now I am multiplying this psi n 0. V and now I have to bring psi 0 1, okay. So I do an expansion of M and then I write psi M 0, close this. It has first a ket vector, so with which this will be closed and then another factor will come psi M 0 V psi 0 0 divided by E 0 0 minus E N 0 which is already there and one more which is coming from here E0 0 minus E0. Right? So you have a double summation but the story is not complete because I have a third term, I have a second term which is E0 1 which just comes out which is E0 1 which can come out and then product of this with this, right? So E0 1 times again there is a summation. Remember E01 is a number, so I can simply take outside. E01 is just a number, so I have a sum over n, sum over m, 
and then I have psi n 0, oh sorry, psi 0, 0, V psi n 0, which is the first term multiplied by this into psi n 0, and now I write psi 0, 1, which is psi m 0, psi m 0, V psi 0, 0, divided by again these two denominators. Correct. So, it is very similar expression except that V is not here. It is directly sin 0, psi 0, 1. Yes. Yeah, we will come to that orthogonality. Yeah, I am coming to that. Okay. So, these are the two expressions. Now, you can see here that the expression becomes simplified for the second term because this is now delta n m. So, n must be equal to m. So, although there is a double summation, it actually becomes single summation. Remember, here it did not happen because there is a v. Otherwise, the expression is exactly identical. It is very easy to write. Take out the v from here. Okay? Instead of that, an e naught 1 has come. So, if you look at the dimension, it is same. You have 3 v here, 1, 2, 3, third order. Here you have 1 v and 2 v, but the third is this e naught 1. So, if you look at dimension in terms of perturbation order, it is still 3. The, instead of V coming here, it has gone out. So, this is, of course, this can be taken out. So, N is now equal to M. So, I can put this as sin 0 and the summation over M can be knocked out and I can call this also E naught square, right? Huh. Huh? Okay, you write it. Now it is very easy, just write it, just put n equal to m. Psi 0, 0, v psi n 0, psi n 0, v psi 0. So it is basically square of this, just like second order energy. But denominator is not second order, like a second order, denominator is a square. Otherwise, what is multiplied with e naught 1 looks like exactly e naught 2 except for this denominator. Otherwise, e naught 2 was exactly same psi 0 0 v psi n 0 or psi k 0 back to back to psi 0 0. If you see this psi 0 0 v psi n 0 back to psi 0 0 divide by the denominator, but now you have a square denominator that is only difference. Otherwise, I would have written as e naught 1 into e naught 2. It would have been even simplified which is also dimensionally third order, but actually it is not this remains. <laughs> 